Warrior Cats villains. They vary greatly in quality, and in this video, I'm going to be ranking them all from worst to best. But first, I have to decide which villains to use. So, here are my rules. First, no sidekicks, such as Dark Stripe and Bone. The list would be way too long if I included them. Only major villains on this list, so I might drop a couple lesser known ones. No misunderstood cats. So Ashfur, Maple Shade, cats whose actions are justified by their harsh treatment. Just kidding! <laughs> Both of them are absolutely on this list. This actually refers to cats like Sparrow, who was misunderstood by Tulltale. Cats only, so no sharp tooth. And finally, temporary villains count. Cats like Hollyleaf and One Star. This list is for any cat who has done antagonistic things. So, given my rules, these are the 22 cats I decided to include. Let's begin. Number 22, Thistleclaw. Blue Star's prophecy sets him up as this big bad villain, and then they just unceremoniously kill him off in a time skip. And also, Spotted Leaf's heart is a thing that happened. Number 21, Slash. The most disappointing villain in my opinion. After tensions were raised so high in the first half of Dawn of the Clans, the villain for the end of the story arc posed such little threat. His team never came close to hurting more than a couple cats. Number 20, Tiger Star 2. The Raging Storm is a frustrating book and Tiger Star 2 was just an awful choice for a villain. He throws away all the compassion he learned throughout the course of his super edition, and in Squirrel Flight's hope, we see that he still hasn't learned anything. Just a cat being mean for the sake of the book having conflict. Number 19, Hawk Frost. They waited way too long to make him dangerous. Just one scene where he puts Firestar in danger. And in the Dark Forest, he's just one of many. His stuff with Mothwing was interesting, but I wanted more from him. Number 18, Dodge. Sky Clan's destiny was a mess, and Dodge just ended up being severely underdeveloped. Just a casual rogue causing trouble here and there. Now, I will give the writing team one thing. Leaving him alive was a very interesting choice. I like the idea that violence isn't always the answer, and sometimes bad people are just going to exist. But then, when they brought him back in Hawkwing's journey, Hawkwing killed him in two seconds, proving violence was the answer all along. I mean, literally none of the character arcs in Sky Clan's Destiny were respected in Hawkwing's journey, rest in peace Shrewtooth, but this one hurts the most. Number 17, One Star. One Star is in the same boat as Tiger Star 2, dropping previous development for conflict. And I just think it was set up poorly. He attacks a clan that was already willing to help. It's just selfish to care so much about Ego when he has cats to feed. I get that he's a villain, just ugh, they could have done him better. Number 16, Mudclaw. I'm putting Mudclaw this high for the concept alone. He was cheated out of his leadership position. I don't care how arrogant he was, he served as deputy fair and square. And you know, One Star ended up being pretty arrogant too, so it's not like Tallstar saved Wing Clan or anything. So yeah, he totally has a case for being upset. I like that. But he just fizzles out too quickly. The tree death is a total cop out when the writers could have come up with something much more interesting for his demise. Number 15, Sleek Whisker. One of the three female villains on this list. Seriously, writing team, make more of them. She barely avoided being a sidekick due to her attack on Rowanclaw in River of Fire. I love analyzing her emotions and how she shows us what would happen if Needletail was more malicious. But I hate how minor she is to the plot. And they didn't kill her, so please let Sleek Whisker return one day. Number 14, Hollyleaf. I'm conflicted with Hollyleaf. Having her turn bad was a great idea, the Leaf Bolt Deathberry scene was dramatic, but it did fall under poor execution. The big reveal that she killed Ashfur was a bit anticlimactic, when it would have been much better to actually tell the scene from her perspective, and keep it on our minds so we can see the paranoia. 
but instead we have some awkward chapters where she knows she killed Ashfur, but it isn't revealed to the reader yet. And speaking of Ashfur, number 13, Ashfur. Ashfur's fire scene is absolutely iconic and nothing could take away from that, but he dies immediately after, making his character arc far too short. Not a bad villain, but not necessarily worthy of being higher on the list. If he ends up being the imposter, this all changes. But we don't know for sure yet, so I'm only judging Long Shadow's Ashfur. Number 12, One Eye. I think One Eye was a good addition because he played well in showing Clear Sky trying to overcorrect himself in his redemption arc. And Greywing getting together with everyone to plan out the evil cat's demise was just really nice. I like that One Eye gave every cat a reason to work together. One of the better one book villains. Number 11, Soul. Manipulation by words instead of claws is a great idea. A villain that works on charisma alone is just, well, charming. He unfortunately ends up not posing much of a threat, and his return with the rogue group makes him much more generic, but I like the idea of him. Number 10, Broken Star. Marked as a pure force of evil from the moment he was born, Broken Star is a villain worth being afraid of. While he mostly acts as a placeholder villain to cause conflict while we wait for Tiger Star's rise, he does that job very well, and Yellowfang's secret made him downright disgusting. Which is fine because he's a villain. Number 9, Breeze Pelt. Yes, the edgy teenager. I find his over-the-top personality and anger to honestly be pretty entertaining and great for memes. We need cats to joke about. While it's questionable whether or not he deserved his redemption, it was very unique to the series. All other evil redemption arcs in the series involve cats that were good all along or good at the start. He's the only pure ball of evil not getting killed or chased out after his crimes. Number 8, Rainflower. Rainflower just caused so much drama. You absolutely hate her, but she makes Crooked Star's promise what it is. Sometimes it's nice to have a cat who's just extremely mean so the main character can prove her wrong. Number 7, Scourge. Scourge was a great twist villain. Firestar having a final battle against Tigerstar would have been rewarding, but ultimately far too obvious. With Scourge, we have a final battle where all the clans can work together, which is honestly a more fitting ending to the first arc. Number 6, Darktail. Darktail was absolutely vital in making the first three of Vision of Shadows books what they are. I liked him because he was very disorganized, yet incredibly manipulative and he caused more disorder in the structure of the clans than any other villain ever. I really like a villain that's capable of making a mess, and Darktail excels at it. Number 5, Mapleshade. Mapleshade, my least favorite cat in the entire series, but she is in my top 5 favorite villains. What's up with that? Well, Mapleshade's vengeance is awful, but we have Crooked Star's promise. I love the paranoia and manipulation she brings to Crooked Star. It's never even confirmed if she actually did anything. She could easily just be taking credit for his bad luck, and that's what makes it so good. She shows the danger of superstition not only to Crooked Star, but to the reader as well. And it's totally up to interpretation whether or not she was actually in control. But one thing's for sure, she sure controlled Crooked Star's mind. Only when he had nothing left was he able to relax. Number 4, Bramble Star. Not the imposter Bramble Star, the regular Bramble Star, because he does get to be an antagonist for Squirrel Flight's Hope. I made a 10 minute video on this that you can go watch if you want, but basically, he shows us the horrors of an abusive relationship. And that's a much more complex issue than we usually see with warriors. I just like this conflict because it can be interpreted in so many different ways, and I've spent a lot of time analyzing this one. Number 3, Tiger Star. The classic, I can't help but appreciate him. He's dangerous, he's persistent, he's a pure force of evil. I love the first main villain because he is such a big threat. I feel Fire Hurt's anxiety. It wasn't until Dark Tale that we would see another cat come so close to taking over the clans. Even after death, he still causes trouble as a spirit. 
I just love a villain that continues to pose a threat even with setbacks. And I will always remember the first six books fondly because of his role. Number two, The Imposter. If The Imposter does end up being Ashfur, then consider Ashfur to be number two, or maybe even number one, I don't know. But as is, The Imposter will hold too. I love, love, love The Imposter. One, just because I can make theory video after theory video on him. And two, he's really using the bramble to make every cat scramble. Haha. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The cats who are set in tradition want to follow him because he keeps saying what they want to hear. And only the more open-minded cats who already doubt the warrior code are seeing through his facade. He's just so powerful and mysterious, and I need to read Veil of Shadows right now, please come out sooner. Number 1. Clear Sky. I love a villain with extensive development, and Clear Sky is just that. He does bad things, but you understand what's going on in his head. You see his frustration and desperation to create stability in his new group, and how he slowly grows more and more hostile towards Grey Wing and other outsiders, until the dramatic battle that ultimately exposes the flaws in his logic. And then we get a three book redemption arc for him. The Blazing Star in particular is just the perfect depiction of a confused cat struggling to correct his conception of morality, and it's all around one of my favorite main series books. Alright, that concludes my list. Who's your favorite villain? Who's your least favorite? Let me know in the comments. Bye everyone.